Under number five, we're talking about gathering assets, valuing them, inventorying them. Along the lines, that same lines is what expenses are there? Expenses of funeral and last illness have to be paid. Um, other expenses don't have to be paid. If you are um, in a probate process or under um, a trust, there's a notice process under a trust process as well. You can give notice to creditors and they have to follow very strict rules in order to uh, show they have a legitimate claim. And if they fail to do that, you don't have to pay that credit card bill or that claim. So there are ways that the estate can be benefited by going through a notice to creditors process. Without getting into too many details, what I'm simply trying to explain is expenses have to be paid. Legitimate expenses have to be paid. Why? Because they are legally owed. And until you pay the expenses of the estate, you don't know how much you're going to be able to distribute because you take what the assets are, you subtract subtract the expenses and the net amount, what's left after you pay expenses is what you're gonna be distributing. Keep in mind that the IRS is always there. So with the IRS, there could be tax liability and that tax liability might not just be for the year of the decedent's death. Not that commonly, but now and then we see that the decedent didn't file taxes for the last five years and they owe money. The IRS is what we call a super creditor, and that means they're gonna get paid. The person in charge of settling the estate is responsible for filing the decedent's last tax return and making sure that they are current on their taxes. Let's say that this is not a probate, let's say this isn't a trust administration, this, let's say this is a, a situation where it was set up to avoid either of those scenarios and everything was going to pay automatically. If you're the person who's in charge of settling this estate, you still have authority um, by the IRS and they actually call you the personal representative because you're the one who is assumed and are taking this responsibility and taking this action. They'll allow you to file the decedent's last tax return. Let's say that in communicating with the IRS, you find that there's a big tax bill owed. And let's say that everything was set up to go automatically to you without probate, without a trust administration. Are you able to avoid that tax bill? The answer is no. You are going to have to pay that tax bill from the money you received from the decedent. Those details aside, what I want to impress upon you is that when it comes to expenses, don't forget the IRS. I was just talking about personal tax liability. There could also be estate tax liability. The personal return is typically a form 1040 or that's a simple 1040 easy, I think that an estate or trust tax return is called the 1041. This is where bringing in your accountant is going to make all the difference to make sure that you feel really confident that you have done your job of satisfying and paying any tax liability or finding out there's none. Great news. And that way you can distribute the assets of the estate without worrying. So gather the assets, pay the expenses, make sure those expenses include any tax liability.